Another example. Chetan and Deepak entered into a joint venture to construct a shed. They did not open separate set of books. They shared profits and losses 3 is to 2. Chetan purchased materials for 3 lakh. Deepak paid wages amounting to 1 lakh 60,000. Chetan also incurred other expenses of 40,000. Purchased a machine for 40,000. Total contract value of rupees 6 lakh was received by Deepak. The machine was taken over by Chetan for half the cost price. What will be the profit on venture? If we are asked for only the profit on venture, we can quickly prepare a memorandum joint venture account and ascertain the profit or loss. We don't need to go through the entire gamut of journal entries and subsequent ledger accounts. So what would be the joint venture? If suppose I just write a memorandum joint venture like this and put all the expenses on the left side and all the incomes on the right side. So I'm putting all the expenses this side and I'll put all the incomes this side. Then what happens? <clears throat> Let us see. We will start with Chetan purchased materials for 3 lakh. Deepak paid wages amounting to 1 lakh 60,000. Chetan also incurred other expenses of 40,000. Purchased a machinery again for 40,000. Total contract value is 6 lakh. So if you notice, I have not bothered to see whether this was Chetan's expense or Deepak expense because all we are asked to do is to find out profit on venture. The machine was taken over for Chetan, no, taken over by Chetan for half the cost price. So what was the cost price? It was 40,000, therefore it was taken over for 20,000. So what do we have now? This is all. We have 6,20,000 this side income. And our expenses were 3,4,60,5,5,40,000. Therefore 5,40 expense. Income of 6,20, profit of 80,000 should be the answer. Correct answer should be B, 80,000. So all we have done is to put expenses on one side, incomes on the other side and arrive at the profit, 80,000. A and B enter into a joint venture to underwrite the shares of K Limited. K Limited made an issue of 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each. 80% of the issue is subscribed by the party. The profit sharing, this is actually subscribed for by the public. The profit sharing ratio between A and B is 3 is to 2. The balance unsubscribed shares are purchased by A and B in the profit sharing ratio. And how many shares are purchased by A? So before we move on to do this, a quick understanding of what is underwriting of the shares. A company may issue shares to the public. Now if a company issues 10 lakh shares to the public, it has no guarantee that all 10 lakhs will be subscribed for. It is quite possible the public are very interested and it is oversubscribed and more than 20 lakh shares are subscribed for. But on the other hand, the issue may be undersubscribed, that is only less than 10 lakhs may be subscribed for. So what a company does is, when it issues shares, it normally appoints an underwriter. What does the underwriter do? The underwriter comes and guarantees that the entire issue is going to be subscribed for. What the underwriter says is that if the public does not subscribe for your shares, then the underwriter, he will take the balance shares. He will buy the balance shares. So the underwriter thus removes the risk of uncertainty in an issue of share. <clears throat> so the company, once if it, the company makes an issue of 10 lakh shares of penny, it will be assured that the entire issue will be subscribed for because even if the public does not subscribe for, for the same, the underwriter will. 
for this usually the underwriter is given a certain commission a commission on the amount that he has underwritten so having said this let us see if we can work out this problem a and b enter into a joint venture to underwrite the shares of k limited and k limited has made an issue of 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each 80% of the issue is subscribed for by the public so 80% of the issue 80% of 1 lakh shares or 80000 shares are subscribed for by the public what is the balance share the total issue issue is for 1 lakh shares subscribed for 80000 shares so balance 20000 shares has to be taken up by the underwriter has to be taken up by the underwriter assuming that the profit sharing ratio is 3 is to 2 what how many shares have to be taken up by a 3 is to 2 that means 3 by 5 and 2 by 5 are the shares of a and b respectively 3 by 5 of 20000 we get 12000 shares would be taken up by a the correct answer should be option c 12000 shares so the company has made an issue to the public the total issue is for 1 lakh shares the public but take only 80000 of the shares therefore the balance to 20000 has to be taken by a and b who have entered into a joint venture as underwriters out of this 20000 they have agreed that a will take 3/5 of the share and b will take 2/5 of the shares therefore 3/5 of 80000 12000 shares would be taken up by a this is another case of underwriting however this has partial underwriting a and b enter into a joint venture to underwrite shares of k limited and k limited made an issue of 1 lakh equity shares 80% of the shares were only underwritten by the venturer the problem here is that the entire issue is not underwritten only 80% of the issue is underwritten the balance 20% is not underwritten now what happens is when only a part of the issue is underwritten or there are more than one underwriters and shares are received from the public we get what is called marked applications what is a marked application when shares are subscribed for on applications which bear the seal of the underwriter which bear the seal or stamp of the underwriter they are said to be marked applications so if a b and c all underwrite a underwrites 20% of the issue b underwrites 30% of the issue c underwrites 30% of the issue if such is the case then very often when applications come in many of the applications will bear the stamp of a many will bear the stamp of b and many will bear the stamp of c these are all called marked applications some marked in favor of a some marked as coming from b and some marked as coming from c in this particular case there is only one underwriter but only 80% has been underwritten only 80% underwritten now it is not necessary that all applications are stamped if they do not bear the stamp of an underwriter then they are called unmarked applications then they are called unmarked applications marked applications unmarked applications now when only partial underwriting is there the unmarked applications actually belong to the company it's as if for the balance amount the company is the underwriter and the unmarked applications are marked in favor of the company 
Now, why is this distinction made? Say, for example, reading this example further, we get that 80,000 shares are subscribed for by the public. If 80,000 shares are subscribed for by the public, we do not know how much is marked and how much is unmarked. There is no mention here. Usually, we would know in practical uh, situation, we would know exactly how much is marked, how much is unmarked. But in such a situation, if a question says 80,000 shares are subscribed for by the public and we do not know how much is marked and how much is unmarked, we assume that the same proportion that is underwritten, exactly the same proportion of the applications are marked. That means 80% of 80,000, that is 64,000, is marked in favor of the, is marked in favor of the underwriter and the remaining 16,000 is not marked and therefore the benefit of this actually goes directly to the company. Underwriter does not get the benefit of this. So, how many shares is the underwriter now responsible for? His gross liability, his gross liability for the shares, total liability is 80,000 shares. Less marked applications, that is marked in his favor, it is assumed, it is assumed to be 64,000. Therefore, his liability is, is 16,000 shares. His liability is for 16,000 shares. The correct answer should be B, 16,000 shares.